before we jump in, I just want to remind everyone to please, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Um, I do post a lot of stuff on YouTube. I've been trying to post more on YouTube. So if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe below, let people know about them. Moving on. Hey everyone, welcome to therevitkid.com. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to break down a project that I worked on. This is a uh, smaller project, so I'm hoping that this may uh, be more relatable to some of you. I know I get a lot of emails about residential projects and different scale. And so what this is is actually a um, master suite renovation that um, that I designed for uh, a couple not too far away from where I live. And uh, what I want to do is sort of introduce the project and then talk about how I utilize design options in the early uh, stages of this project to narrow down the design, um, as well as carry that design option into Lumion um, and able to create the images that you see here. So first, a little walkthrough of the project. These are some of the first, um, I shouldn't say first, um, some of the first presentations of a couple options that we produced. And what you could see here is um, the, the space had a, uh, an office as part of uh, the design uh, program, um, a bedroom, and um, a master bath uh, with a big closet. Um, this is actually option one, so this is not existing. We'll talk about existing in a second. Um, you can see it's kind of an interesting shape. It's got this weird uh, 45 degree notch out. It's a mid-century modern building. Very, very cool house. Um, so we're excited to work on it. So here's an option. This is built and modeled completely in Revit, um, rendered in Lumion. This is actually Lumion 8.0 um, because it was done, I believe, uh, last year. Um, so you're going to see Lumion 8 and Revit 2018 because I didn't want to upgrade the files at this moment. Um, but here's option one. Here's a couple more renderings from option one, again, using Lumion. This would be the office space looking towards the bedroom. Here's the, the bed sitting on that sort of oblonged 45 degree interesting shape. Um, and here's a look into the bathroom as well as a look from the tub. Uh, one of the keys here was it has standalone or a freestanding tub that on the left hand side had a, a lower window um, where you can sort of see across the view. This, this house had a amazing view of, um, of Northwestern Connecticut uh, rolling hills. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so then option two, you can see the floor plans a little different here. We have the office on the left hand side. We have this sort of floating wall that the bed is uh, perched up against with a, a TV wall kind of in front of it. Um, and then the bathroom becomes part of that ablong sort of 45 degree jut out. So just a couple more images of that. Um, you can see it's got a completely different feel on the inside. And then here's the bathroom with all those funky ceilings and 45 degree angles and all that cool stuff. Again, these are rendered completely in Lumion. So those were the two options that we ran through. We actually had two other options, which you'll see in the model, but I just wanted to show you sort of a little context. Um, and then before we jump into Revit, just to give you a sense of what this project looked like in the very beginning, um, as you can imagine, this is a mid-century modern building. So it was, uh, you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s type of uh, finishes. You could see some of the beautiful woodwork, um, even kept the lava lamp in place. Um, and uh, some of the interesting details as I flip through here. Sorry for the rotated angles, but that just gives you a sense of some of the some of the images that we had there and so what we had to work with. Okay, so it's pretty cool. It actually came out very nice. Um, I'm going to share some of these in blog posts, but uh, uh, you can see some before and after. The left hand side is the actual completed project. Um, here's another picture of it there. Uh, you can see the bathroom on the left. You can see that view a little bit through the windows there. I'm definitely going to go take some some better pictures, but so that's the project. Pretty cool, um, simple little project, you know, um, nothing crazy and probably a little different than you're used to seeing me post here on the blog, which I think will be refreshing to some of you guys. But what I really want to talk about is how I set up the design options. If you get if you haven't used design options in Revit, definitely look into them. And this is going to be a nice little design options. Uh, uh, I guess we can say um, 101 for those of you not familiar with it. But this is the model, um, and this is the model that we use to export to Lumion. I have a section cut so that you can see what's happening on the inside. So we use a couple things. First, we have the existing model, which is what you're seeing here. So um, you can see the existing project or the existing floor plan was pretty basic. We had the office on the left-hand side with all that beautiful wood paneling. We had our bedroom on the right-hand side, and then this bathroom in the middle um, with a uh, couple little built-in closets, a uh, nice uh, pink tub, and some, some lovely tile. Um, so that was the existing uh, footprint. There's this also this little desk here. And so we modeled that on the existing phase. Um, we demoed what we needed to. So if I change my phasing to new construction and then show previous plus demo, 
um, you can see there everything that's demolished. So all of that is in the main model. That is not part of the design option. And you'll notice what we did is we strategically kept the exterior um, as separate elements from a lot of these other pieces. So nothing's hosted to the exterior um, except for these walls here. And that's key because what you'll notice when you start using design options is once you start hosting the different things, you're going you're to end up making everything part of your design option. The exterior of this building was not changing. We're just renovating the inside. Um, so we made sure to make... To, to make um, all of these pieces uh, that you see in gray here, we made sure to make all of those uh, part of the main model and separate from our design options. So now we're going to flip over to new construction show complete. And you can see this was option A. And so this is actually the uh, not even the chosen option, actually, it modified quite a bit from there. But um, and you actually, you can see here we were doing some things that obviously doesn't work there, but we were, we were testing some stuff out. But the key here is that you'll notice as I drag across here, I can select all these outside stuff, but on the inside, I can't actually select these pieces. That's because they're part of a design option. And so for those of you that don't know what design options are, they're under manage um, and then design options right here. If you click this, this is where you can manage them. And so we have an option set here. We didn't name it very well, but it's a small project. Um, you can see we have 1A, which is ex existing water wall and flat ceiling. Um, option 2, which has a raised floor. Option 3, and then option 1B conform. So we had a couple different options in here. And so when you have a model that has a ton of options, just a little tip for you guys, uh, and you don't know what option this is part of, what you can do is you can click Pick to Edit. And then now you're able to select stuff that's inside of options. And when you click that, you'll see it automatically jumps into my design option which down at the bottom you can see is option 1A. Okay, and so now you're not going to see this is flipping off screen on me, but when I pull this drop down, um, it's actually flipping through all the different, let me see if I can get this to work. Let's see, there we go. It's flipping through all the different options. So we're in 1A. So if I flip this to 2, you'll notice just the inside is changing. So this is actually the raised floor option because there were some plumbing issues there. And so you can see we have a, a restroom on the, uh, the bathrooms on the back here, uh, the beds here, and there's a step down into the office. And then we had an option three, which is just trying a couple other things here. Okay, so once you flip through the options, once you set them up, it's pretty easy. You can just model within each option. You just select it here, and whatever you model here. So if I, if I was to draw a new wall right here, um, if I flip to option 1A, you'll see that disappears. If I go back to two, you'll see that options there, okay? So it's pretty simple. You create an option set. So if we wanted to create a new option set, let me go back to main model, design options. We would create a new option set. You can see it's created here. Then you just make your actual options. So option two, option three, option four. And then you have two options, either two options, huh, pun intended. If you were to select um, your option on the bottom drop down. Once you're, once you're activated here on the bottom, you can actually just model what you need and you're inside the option. The other thing that you can do, and not necessarily the, the, my sort of suggested way, is if you were to draw a piece of a wall or element or anything in the model, you can actually select it, go to Manage, and then Add to Set, and then you can pick whatever design option sets you want to drop it into. So this can be helpful if you have a bunch of the same thing being duplicated and maybe modified a little bit. You can model it first and then dump it into four options and then modify it. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty simple to use. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm going to pull this down so you can see a little more. So that's just sort of how you work with options. If you want to actually dedicate views to options, what you can do is under VG on your keyboard or VV, um, which is your visibility graphic override, you can actually automatically set your views to the design option. So if I go to option set one, and I say I want to do raised floor here, no matter what I have set down on the bottom picker here, you can see this view is dedicated to that option set. So now you can set up a bunch of floor plans, 3D views, etc., that are actually showing your design options, which is great. So that's how it's set up in the project environment, uh, and sorry, in the Revit environment. And so now the cool thing is with Lumion, you can handle um, options pretty much the same way. So what you'll notice here is that I actually have Lumion export view, which is this little half of a house. And then I also have a Lumion export cut view. So one of the things you'll notice is that um, in Lumion, you have the ability to place a clip plane, which actually makes a floor plan view. But in order to create these cool floor plans you see here, let me back up. 
we really wanted to make sure we had that dark cut fill. So you can see the layers of the wall. You can see the, the clapboard. You can see the jip board and all that other stuff. In order to do that, you actually need to cut it and rev it so that you have the ability to pick those materials. And so I'll show you in Lumion what that looks like. But what we had here is we just had a Lumion export view for um, the overall building, which is just this front corner, and then the cut view. And so what we did is we, we flipped through our options and we exported each variation to Lumion. So once exported, what you'll notice is that we have a whole bunch of options ready for Lumion. So we have 1A, 1A cut, 1B, one uh, option 2, option 2 cut, option 3. So we have all these different variations of the model. And so those are all completely exported via Revit, ready for our Lumion project. So how do you manage these in Lumion now? So if I jump over to our Lumion file, a little, uh, a little behind the scenes here, you'll notice that this is just a nice floating corner of the house, which is kind of funny. Some of you may get a kick out of that, but as you saw from the final images, you don't necessarily need to model anything beyond that. This is actually very similar to what the view is that they have. Um, it's absolutely stunning view. Okay, so I'm just standing in the office now. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip over to um, one of the cut views so that you can really see how this works. So if I click my model, you'll notice on the bottom we have variations. If you're in Lumion 9, it'll actually be on the top here, but same, same principle is going to apply. So you'll notice we have a couple variations. We have the options, and then we have the options cut. And so if I back out of here, I look down, I go to option 1A cut. You'll notice that my cut plane has the stud layer, the plywood, the clapboard, the chipboard. So that's what gives you a really cool plan view. But once you have these models exported, what you'll notice is that you can just flip through these design options just like you're seeing here, and you can start managing these things in Lumion. So now the furniture is not changing because what we did in Lumion is we actually had um, furniture for each of the options as layers on the top left here. So if I flip through here, you can see that's an option there. This is more, this is the co uh, conform set. This is actually um, much closer to what was actually built, which is kind of cool. But now what you can do is you can actually manage these three options in Lumion. So again, if I jump back to option one, option two, let's say, I can go up here and I can turn off the furniture for option one, turn on the furniture for option two, and then also I think I have one more that should be off. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> and then in the photo mode, you can do the same thing. So in the photo mode, um, you can see I have different versions of all these options set up in the same exact file. And the way you control those is just by la uh, layer visibility. So if I jump in here, you can see my layer visibility effect is on and off. And if I jump into my variation control, I actually have controls over those variations. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to create those images all in the same file. So you can explore a bunch of different options without jumping into a million different files, a million different things. So it's an extremely powerful tool. Um, one little tip for those of you who want to use options, um, or sorry, variations in Lumion, is uh, once you load uh, your first variation in, um, usually you want to try and make it to have the most, the one with the most materials, for example. Um, if you wanted these all to have the same materials. If you, if you were actually apply materials to your first option or your variation before loading any new models in, as long as the materials have the same name, it's going to inherit what you modified for that first one. So, of course, you could always save your material sets and reapply them. But a little tip for you Lumion users using variations. If you, if you load a single load a single variation in, uh, apply materials, and then uh, load the next variation. So actually, what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm actually going to create a new file just to show you how I actually load these in for those of you who want to know. So I'm going to start a plain file here. So here's a, here's a plain Lumion file. So I'm actually going to uh, import a new model. I'm going to go to my project here. Uh, Lumion model. So I'm going to load in option 1A cut. And it's already there, so I'm going to call it number 2. Okay. So you can see here's my file there. So what I mean by materials is that right now, if I was to load in the next variation, it's going to have the same material properties. And what I'd have to do is go back to each variation and modify the materials. But if I was to go in right now and change, for example, this wood floor 
to uh, just something that Lumion has. Let's just do this for now. Uh, and then I was to add a, a variation, which to add a variation is very simple. You select your imported model on the bottom right, or again, if you're in 9, it'll actually be on the top right. Um, you click Add Variation. You add uh, 1B, so Option 2, Cut. Click Open. And Add. And you'll notice that the wood stayed the same because it has the same name. So a little pro tip for you guys using variations in Lumion. Um, add materials to your full model before adding the rest of your variations. It'll help. You can, if you wanted to, you can always just save out uh, save out the material set. You could save a material set and load them in. But if you have 100 variations, obviously, uh, although you're limited to 10, but <laughs> if you had a bunch of variations, you could see where it could be a pain in the butt. So in, as, as a sort of recap, um, what we did here is very simple. We had three options. We had design options in Revit along with our existing conditions and our phasing. We exported each, each option from Revit. We jumped into Lumion. We imported each option as a variation in Lumion. We did what we needed to do. We created our images and so on and so forth. It was a great workflow. Um, for those of you not familiar with this process, I hope it helps. I know um, um, as, as a designer and running through with, uh, especially in residential work, you do end up going through tons of different options. Um, you'll notice that um, we went through a bunch and we eventually got to our final design, which we called our conform design. But um, I hope this process helps you guys out. Um, if you're more interested, or if you're interested in these type of videos, if you're interested in um, more of this type of project and, and work through, let me know, comment below, and uh, I hope to talk to you guys later.